explain the universe with its complex laws I'm, and complex I, I believe assembly. in natural selection, and I do believe... No, yeah. natural selection doesn't explain matter. So no, you're right, you're right, and that's right. why I'm agnostic. No, no, that's why you cannot use the natural selection card as a comfort zone because it doesn't help. It's You have to remove natural selection. You, you can move it, like you can move it, just make sure we're all in it. Uh, no, no, don't, don't play with this as much. Now this is what we're exploring then. So, matter, if it was not real, anything for Sikona. How? Give me a rational explanation. As I say, I go back to the, to the edge of the knowledge of science at the moment. I mean, we used to think things about gravity that we now don't believe. Yeah. So what does that tell you about science? You can't appeal to your, your ignorance. Yeah. So what does it know? What does it? What does it tell you about science that we used to believe about things about gravity that we don't believe anymore? Well, as I say, you know, there's edges to our knowledge, and, we, and it's great. A lot of but you keep saying you're limiting yourself to science. Doesn't that tell you I that? So I've limited no, myself. you said it earlier. Like I keep limiting myself to what science no, no, is no, like. No, I'm saying I am limited. Would that be You could we know things uh, in other ways other than just through science? Is science the only way we could know things about the world? So that's why I said you're limiting yourself to science. So the question now becomes, what does it tell you? What does it tell you that we used to believe things about gravity before that we don't believe about now? What does it tell you? Science is malleable. Yes, agreed. Science is what? Best explanation based on a limited data set, ever evolving, ever changing, based on the data set growing, correct? Yes. So it's, science is what? Not primed for truth. It's primed for best explanation, right? So if it's prime, it's not primed for truth, and, if, and as well, if you want to go down the evolutionary route, it's not primed for truth at all. It's just primed for survivability. So it'll actually give you, it'll prefer false beliefs over true ones if it means your survivability. For instance, think about mushrooms, yeah? You don't know which mushrooms are poisonous, and which mushrooms are good for you. But you know what? A sure way to not get poisoned by them and making ensuring your survivability is just to believe all mushrooms are poisonous. Mm -hmm. That way, your si the science is actually preferring falsehood over truth, but at the expense of giving you a better chance of survivability. So science is not only not primed for truth, it actually could be primed for falsehood. So all I'm telling you is we could love and appreciate and use science for what it's meant to be and keep it and give it its epistemological weight, its value that it deserves. But we don't need to restrict ourselves to it. Is that is that rational to you? Okay, alhamdulillah. So then what possible other roots of knowledge could we have if, if it's not only now restricted the to science? What do you mean the year 700 AD? Oh yeah, that's the year 700 AD. Yeah. Like Prophet Revelation. Yes. Yeah. From, from, from yeah. the divine revelation from the one who created us. You see? I find interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So one of the reasons why the Quran convinces people because oh, of... I'm on camera now. No, 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 it's educational it's only. It's only, it's only educational, yeah, yeah. One of the reasons why the Quran convinces the mind, the Gnostic mind, because of the evidence it provides. It just simply doesn't say believe and that's it. It provides the mechanism to believe at the same time through evidence and support. Is there evidence? Can we see evidence that Muhammad split the moon in half? You and I know we haven't. Is that but that's, but, but, but that's not the evidence the Quran is giving us now here. Because some evidence are time bound. The people who witnessed it, people who witnessed the splitting of the sea, raising of the dead, and so on, for them it was an evidence against it. They will have nothing in the day of judgment because that's a hujjah. It means a proof established against them and they disbelieve because they, they could not explain any other way. I understand that. For us, for us, Quran provides loads more perpetual, universal evidence which is within our reach rather than evidence which was time bound historically at the time. Tell me about some of these evidences. Exactly, exactly. The Quran says if this book wasn't from God, you should be able to imitate it. Either the whole book of it, 10 chapters of it, or even a single chapter. The Quran even challenges it and gives this fortification to us. That if it was from God, there's no way you can imitate it. But if it wasn't, you should be able to. And the Quran doesn't just stop there. It says, like, if you really think it's not from God, you can't do it yourself, then go and seek helpers and supporters uh, if, if you need to besides God. I'm talking about... So why is it that 1444 years or so has gone? People 
still are unable to meet this challenge of imitating. What do you mean imitating? Bringing something like the Quran. The Quran is an Arabic language, you know, on, a, on its own linguistic genre and its own stylistics. Yet, this is different from ordinary Arabic speech. Is this different from the speech of the pre-Islamic poets? It is different from the speech of the soothsayers? Is it different from the speech of the, the Quran? So the Quran is on a linguistic genre, absolutely unique in its meters, rhymes, and stylistics. Of course, the content goes with it, with eloquence. If it was something, a human speech, made up by a, from a one human being or a collection of human beings, you should be able to imitate it. If I ask now Chad GPT, compose me a Shakespeare sonnet, it will do that straight away, in 30 seconds. And someone who is a Shakespearean scholar will say, oh yeah, it's exactly with this criteria. These syllables and, the, and so on and so forth, they match. But if you ask Chad GPT, nicely enough, imitate the Quran, it would not be able to. I've got a whole more than one hour video on this, trying to help him out or it out to make and imitate the Quran and eventually you have to agree that we cannot because of the, the nature of the Quran. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's very it's, specific, but could you, could you not say the same thing about the Bible? And if not, tell me why. The Bible doesn't even challenge anyone because it's human speech, human writings, human authorships, Anonymous and you can compose something like the Bible. Yeah. Like, well, have I don't, you, I don't have put you, my faith have in you, the Bible. Have you seen, for example, <laughs> the writings of the Good Church man. of Latter-day Saints, Book of Mormon? Mm. It sounds very much, very much like the KGB, very similar, right? So but the Quran in Arabic language, which is the original language, nothing can be imitated. So one of the most powerful evidence of Islam being true, Prophet Muhammad Islam being the true prophet, Quran being the, the divine revelation from Allah, is this inimitability challenge of the Quran. It's called tahaddu in Arabic, linguistic inimitability challenge of the Quran. People have been trying for the last 1400 years and all Oh, they are now agreeing that okay, even the scholars and so he the non Muslim scholars as well. Why is it so difficult? Sometimes I, we, we ask the Orientalist scholars, why don't you attempt to try it? They don't even go near it because they know they can't. 1400 years is a tiny speck amount of time. We should give it millions, really. Who were the best people to imitate the challenge of the Quran? The people who at that time were the best in their language. The Arab poets during the time of Prophet Muhammad, <coughs> contemporary people who were masters and experts in the language, who would live and die poetry, hang the best poem in the world of the Kaaba, the Mu'allaqat, they were the best to make the challenge. And they're the ones who conceded and they said, Laisa hadha kalamul bashar, this is not the speech of a human being. They're the ones who said this was magic, not the speech of a human being. So you don't need to give millions of years because the more time you go, the less and less you will be proficient in, the, in that language. People who were there living and eating, dying that language, they declared themselves it is impossible to meet it. And that's why people became Muslim. Some people even fainted and died hearing the Quran because of the power of the Quran, the command of the power. We have reports like this, the Bedouin heard, collapsed, fainted, and he died. So you can mention this. We don't appreciate this because we are reading translations of the Quran, or we're reading the Quran, not how the Quran was in the million in the social historical context, how it was. This challenge is only so easy that you only need to produce three lines in a particular style of asura. Surah, for example, either Kalfar. Because every surah, this is something that people don't appreciate and know. You miss this when you read translations. Every chapter of the Quran is unique in its style. No chapter is similar to the other. Every single chapter. Those Muslims listen to it. The rhymes, meters, the stylistic, the uslub, they're all different. Even the story that's why, Islam, that's yeah. why the Quran says, you know, bring a chapter like into it. Choose any chapter, because every every chapter is unique. So if you, Do you are idolize this book. We don't idolize it. We it say this is the like speech you do, of, which is this is an evidence. Completely against your religion, wouldn't it? The Quran says this is a book. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The month of the month Ramadan is in which God revealed the Quran as a guidance unto mankind and a proof of that guidance. Oh, a proof of that guidance. So we don't idolize the Quran. We are 
sharing the Quran with you, which not only is a guidance from our God to how to live our life and how to understand why we are here, the purpose of our life, and to fulfill that purpose, at the same time, it gives us the evidence of that guidance so we can be content, we can be happy, we can be tranquil, we can be confident, we can be competent, and we can be sure that what we are following is something that is true. That is what the Quran is making people to interact in that way. Quran doesn't simply say, oh, you disbelievers, you don't believe in God, God and Quran, go to hell. It says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كَانَتَا وَتْقًا فَفَتَقُنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ It says, do not be unbelievers, see. Have they not known that the heavens and the earth was joined together as one piece, as one unity, singularity? And then, and then God parted it asunder and then he, he made every living thing from water and the Quran, the ayah, finishes by this. Would they then not believe? Look at how the approach of the Quran is, people who are agnostics and people who are non-believers. It addresses them. Oh, unbelievers, oh, people who don't believe in Allah, in Islam, in Quran, in Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did you know not, did you not see that? Were you not already aware? And then it gives you some information and at the end it says, would you then not believe? So that means the Quran engages people's concern, addresses them, gives them evidence, and then asks, why are you not believing? Would you then not believe? What was the evidence provided in this chapter, in this particular ayah? <coughs> Two evidence, one from astro astrophysics and one from biology, on the same breath. The common origin of the universe, Earth, Sun, Star, galaxies, everything was one singularity, and there was separation. That's what we know today, and that's what they will tell you today. Yes, we know, yeah, but that wasn't common knowledge. That wasn't known because we came to confirm knowledge of this through the red shift, through the universe's stars receding from each other, the expansion of the universe, Hubble's telescope, all that experiments, background radiation. And at the same breath, the Quran says every living thing from water. Look, the Quran was given to a prophet who was living in a desert, hardly any water to drink. Let me ask you some questions. And can I finish that statement and then you can ask on that? Just okay. to highlight. I feel like I'm being preached to. No, I want to give you evidence so that you appreciate the evidence. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. The Bedouins had hardly any water in the desert. They had hardly any rain to collect water or any pools and you know, oasis to have water. And the Quran is saying every living thing from water. How did. Prophet Muhammad go deep down in the deep, you know, deepest oceans and find out the living being, they need water for their life. How, did he go down in a volcano underneath the, the deepest mean? volcano? He went down into the oceans and found living animals. He didn't. Water. How can he make a claim if he didn't? How did he go in space somewhere else? What did he claim? He says every living thing is from water. Without water, there's no life. That's why scientists will tell you on Mars, if you want to think about this life, was there any sign of water? In any other planets you go to, were there signs of water? That's how we are. So Quran gives you two information, one from astrophysics and one from biology. Would you not then believe? Interesting. How's your Ramadan? Very good, thank you. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. No, not yet. No. So you eat before sunrise and when the sun sets? So our day starts in, in a day is sunrise to sunset. It changes during seasons because of the lunar calendar. Sometimes now 7.38 today is when the sun is going to set and we will break our fast and have a start. And it will just go slightly more and more and more. more. Some other month, some other year, it might be 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and so on and so forth. Sometimes it can be even earlier because of this course. So we see the whole variety of it. Do you know why we fast? Let me ask you some questions. I just wanted to check how your Ramadan was, but... Yeah. Good, thank you. Ramadan is okay for me. Um, so in terms of the moon splitting in two, don't you find it odd how there's no evidence that we can... I'm not an astrophysicist, no. maybe there shouldn't be I don't find it odd. No. I don't find it odd. Now, I don't know enough about the subject. How but... long How long have you been speaking right now? <coughs> Roughly? Half an hour? Okay. Did you see the moon? Something happening to the moon? No. You didn't even look at it. So how do you expect 
in a temporary event that was done to show someone some evidence miracle and then it was joined back together that people will be looking at the moon and say oh we expect so many people around the world because none of you are looking at the moon i don't mean that i mean no no what i'm saying is to expect evidence of a moon splitting is like asking you now oh why didn't you look at the moon what happened to it because you're not concerned what's happening in the moon so you don't expect people to look at the moon and observe whether it's split or not what we are saying is this is a miracle that happened allah gave the authority to prophet muhammad وسلم, to split the moon it split and it joined back together it doesn't have to be leaving a mark with a crack it can be exactly how it was to begin with so you're saying like oh we can go to the moon now mm -hmm. and we can find a crack no you don't have to because allah can bring it back together without any cracks remaining this was an evidence for the people then and those who witnessed it do you know what was their reaction no quran records it they just simply said it's magic because they could not explain any other way because they could see that it's not rational because two options you have to believe that this is a miracle and accept him a prophet if you don't want to accept that you have to come up with some other theories it's, uh, it's magic you, you, you've mesmerized us through magic however he was a normal man correct ordinary human being like was but entrusted with the duty of revelation to convey the revelation to everyone else so even though he ate and drank and so on but god made him molded him developed him programmed him to be the best of human beings in his best. character in yep. his character in his attitudes Absolutely. in his morals in his manners so that he can be the role model Uswatun Hassan so he's the best but we can't idolize him yes no you cannot worship him yes and I got a no no yeah look we you should idolize, idolize him. I agree no you should idolize him. You no 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 you shouldn't oh you shouldn't yeah, yeah. you cannot idolize him whoever worships prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going to go to hell yep absolutely but we love him we love him more than ourselves more than our parents more than everything else this absolutely. is the love we have of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it sounds like idolization if you say he's the best and no, love we love him. allah we worship him. Him. then we love and our parents our prophet more than ourselves. Do you know why? Because he's worthy of our love. If there is a creator, would you not want to love him? Why more we love our creator because he's worthy of our love. Why more than Moses or Jesus? Is it just because he is the last prophet that he is better? God excels one prophet from the other. It is up to him. God says, Tilka rusulu faddalna ba'dhum ala ba'd. God raised and elevated or gave faddal some blessings one prophet of the other. For us, we say, we make no distinction. We make no distinction between them. However, we make no distinction. We yes. make no distinction. God makes that distinction. So if God says, Musa, Allah spoke to him directly. We say yes. He is the one who spoke to God directly. And God, if God says, Ibrahim Islam, Allah took him as Khalil. Yeah, we say yes. He's been preferred, even with this epithet, Khalilullah, you know, a friend of Allah. We don't make a distinction. God does. So there's no idolization. We give the description, the attributes, the role what Allah has given. We don't go beyond that. We don't say even about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We cannot say about Allah something that He hasn't said about Himself. That's our limit. We cannot speak about Allah that He hasn't spoken about what is Himself. It? 100 descriptive words, right? The names that Allah has provided, yes. we can How use. Many? We'll use them. We cannot use one of the names of Allah is Allah is energy. Yeah. Allah is an experience. Can I ask one more question. No. I don't want to take up all the time. No, no, take your time. We're more than willing to, uh, you know, answer your question so that at least you can appreciate. Yeah, and well, and come to come to Islam wholeheartedly. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting any notes. Um, Inshallah. Muhammad, did he write the whole Quran? No, he was unlettered. He could not read and write. He was illiterate. I heard. Yeah. So so he could not write. So the Quran came to him through Angel Jibril, who revealed it in his heart. And he told his companion. And he recited 
He memorized, he got people to memorize, and he got people to write down, those who could write down, and he got people to recite back to him so that he knows that they're written it correctly. Is that considered a miracle, the fact that a normal man can memorize the entire Quran? No, I mean, men, uh, men, men children yeah. memorize the Quran, yeah. Memorizing text is not something miraculous on itself, like but, the but... I would say it's a miracle for a sheep farmer or whatever he was, or a trader, to sit down in the cave and memorize this, this thing from an angel and then, and then relate to his companions perfectly. But it wasn't all at what, like... normal man. I think you think that it was thing? all at once. No, it wasn't like the Quran wasn't just instilled at one point in time, all completed. It was, it, it, it was over, it was, it was piecemeal, 23 year period. In a period of 23 years, yeah. Quran was revealed in a piecemeal. And then it was joined together because God says in the Quran, Inna alayna jama'ahu wa Quran. Yeah. For us is the gathering and the recitations. Mm -hmm. So even though some parts of the Quran was revealed first, it's not the beginning of the Quran. Yeah. The surah, the chapter that was revealed in the Quran, Iqra, it's not in the beginning, the first chapter of the Quran. Does it say why it would shuffle these orders? Does it give reasons? Because God has revealed the Quran with the needs of the people at his time. Oh, yeah, but the Quran also came, also came for the people at all times. You say you so collectively, people, who people? No. because it was just Muhammad alone, right? No. He's not in the desert. He's with community, so he has people. But those aren't his, his people. Tribes. Those are Jews and people. No, no, no. There's people as well. Quraysh people. Community yeah. and the the broader community, the Jews and Christians from the Hijaz and elsewhere in Medina, broader the whole world. And Mecca so was a hub. We 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 are his ummah. We are the followers. You can be part of this ummah. I, I know that. So when you say it was for the needs and wants of the people at the time in that specific region, so were those the chosen people? God sends revelation initially to the people and reforms them so and brings the them man. and brings them back as well. This happens to all communities. But the Quran, even though it started with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, because it came to him as a messenger and a prophet and to his people, but his mission was not restricted to his people. Allah says in the Quran that he has sent Prophet Muhammad but to as be, a mercy to mankind. But as a mercy to all of mankind. Mercy to the whole of mankind. Yeah. When, it, it, historically speaking, why did the Umayyad and the um, Abbasid dynast caliphates spread so far and wide into territories that were before non Muslim? So how is that how something is? It's too far from the Muslims. That's half of the caliphates. When, when the Quran entered in the hearts of people and, and the people were carrying this Quran in the hearts, they wanted to take it through. So, what are the Abbasid and the Umayyads and the Fatimid and and, and, and they took the Quran forward to the people. They, 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 they took the Quran to the people. So whether the Quran... It depends. Look, if you have a community who has become an obstacle to receive the revelation of, of the Quran, the Quran, the Quran at that time is now provided three options. So 10 minutes? Inshallah, Inshallah. Yeah, we have to go in 10 minutes, inshallah. Three options. Let us come to your land and we tell the people, show the people, let the people know about Islam. No problem. Okay. Condition number one. Okay. No issues. If they accept it, that's fine. If they don't accept, then there are other conditions. Like, okay, do you want us to open up the land so that people can hear it? Because you have made an obstacle for the people to hear about the truth, about Revelation's God's final revelation. Yeah. So we need to remove that obstacle. Sounds, so, sounds forceful. No, it's it's forceful. removing... Removing, the, to hear the, removing the obstacle. Yes, not removing forcing people to obstacle. become Muslim. Yeah. Not no, forcing... It's, yeah. it's, look, removing the obstacle, not forcing the people. Those obstacles, still not forcing on them, become a Muslim and become believe in the Quran. No, because they have become an obstacle to God's message to reach to people. Get, look look, it look at this. Full freedom of religion, which I guess we if, if, disagree no, with. No, not even, no, no, no. We actually <laughs> would disagree. <laughs> we we <laughs> shaking your head. Was it a time... I think, no, 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 let's go back to the point. What he explained, what's your explanation for the Quran? Do you think it's the word of God? Do you think Prophet Muhammad is the message of God? He can be one of them. Me? I'm not Muslim, no. No, I'm not saying you're not Muslim. 
So, based upon what Baba uh, Mansour mentioned, what do you think about it? Well, we're on a whole different yeah. point of conversation. So, then. look, Islam, uh, Islam can spread and has spread politically yeah. with might. Yeah, no, no one denies that. But Islam spread as a political entity, with or without might. But Islam as a religion, as a theology, as a belief system, did not spread by force, ever. Because you cannot force people to accept Islam. I cannot put a gun on your head and accept Islam because you can't buy... Uh, uh, you, uh, no, no, what do you mean? No, make, making Christians and Jews pay an additional rent. No, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. 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 You mean, the, wait, wait, wait. You mean uh, the one that's less than the one we have to pay as Muslims? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Jizya, Jizya, you have to Political pay. tax they have to provide to be a citizen of the Islamic State so that the Islamic State can will guarantee their rights and their security. security. Question, do you pay... It comes to no, no. You. It came to Algeria and Morocco no, 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 question, question. Spain. Question, question, question. Your city if, if you are getting oppressed by your government, yeah? Yes. If you're getting oppressed by your government and there's a government from outside that wants to free you from this oppression, wouldn't you see this as a good thing? Oh, yeah, Even if you don't recognize this oppression, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Okay, from a Muslim perspective, we see that if a government obje objects to us uh, preaching the message of Islam, which is the best interest for its people without us forcing anything but at least preaching it then they are uh, they're oppressing you and we need to it's upon us to free you from this in oppression opinion, yeah okay that's fine and this is and it's an and no that's not, no, no 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 that's no, no but that's not the point brother the muslims in, in the land when they when they when they can no longer sustain uh, the protection of the jews they do not they do not put, they cannot uh, take the jews from them yeah. you know the jews said we get persecuted by christians we want you to come i know they came but, to but, but, yeah, yeah exactly so but, but not, that's not, not but that's not the only the point bro just one second, one second, just one second. Just one second. Let me finish this jizya point, yeah? Bro, the point of uh, jizya is what? In, how do governments, uh, like, function? Taxation, right? In the past, they didn't have income tax. You had, in the Islamic state, you had jizya for non-Muslims, and you had zakat. Zakat is higher. If anything, the discrimination is against Muslims, not against non-Muslims. Not just that. Uh, you and your mom and your, your sibling, or like the women in your family and the elderly all get taxed. Under jizya, elderly, uh, people who are not of military age, women, uh, do not get do not get jizya. Yeah, so okay. not only is it a more uh, what's it called beneficial system for you, it's also a more merciful system for you as a non-Muslim. And even you, as a military age person, could not pay jizya and just say that if the country goes to war, you have to go to war as well. That's the point. Is it, it you don't you're not a Muslim. You don't want to fight for the sake of Allah. Therefore, you you don't you don't want to be forced to this. And Islam gives you the option to pay out of it. So it's not discriminatory. It's actually in your favor. That's very interesting, and I, I completely hear that. My comment about Jizya was a small caveat. Mm. You raised an interesting point about how I would have to fight for the country, yeah. for the Islamic Empire. But Islam has, has, has come as a force into my land. Say, yeah. for example, Turkey. Okay, how is... This Turkish I'll give you... I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay, country. how about America? You know there's conscription in America at some point, so they have the draft, right? right. So what about, what about the First Nations people that had to go through the draft? Well, yeah, in the age of... I agree with the full no, no, I'm saying that in, in the age of empires, empires, you either conquer other people or you conquered you got conquered there was no there's no neutrality there's no Switzerland you don't get to just sit there so you either conquer or get conquered we don't live in that right now so we don't need to have but in that time Islam needed to preserve itself because there was other forces that were trying to eat it in the same way so the difference is when other forces would come and conquer Islamic lands they would burn rape pillage destroy the lands and suck all the resources and kill all the people on the other hand under Muslim empires we've had many no 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 I'm not saying by necessity. I'm saying we've had plenty of examples where Muslims and Christians and, uh, and Jews live not only in peace, but Islam actually provided plural legal system. Something that the UK right now would laugh at if somebody tried that. To have Sharia courts here and to have uh, Jews, Jew, uh, Jewish uh, tri uh, tribunals and stuff. Exactly. What do you mean? That's intolerance. Where's the freedom of religion, brother? I want my, I want my divorce. I want my Islamic divorce laws as a, as a Muslim man. this country had constitution and uncodified rules and regulations. Yeah, before. oppressive. Oh. It, what do you mean before? Okay. Well, no, 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 let me tell you. Let me tell you. No, no, but before or after, is it oppressive or not? Is the, the Islamic you legal system tells you? And bring your own laws. What do you come here? So no, no, no. No, no, it doesn't matter. What, if, what about British people who are Muslim? What about British people and their whole ancestry who are British? What about them? 
Do they not get the right to live by their... It's a secular country. If you want to live in a... It's not a secular country. It's a, it's, it's, it's a secular country in some ways. Let's not talk about England. I am What I want to learn from you... I'll tell you something. You didn't sign a social contract. You were, you were coerced into it. You know that. You were coerced into a social... Yeah, I understand. I want to learn from both of you. Yes. How is Islam spreading now? With force? No. I mean, majoritively in a lovely, peaceful way as a gentleman here. Yeah, because there's no age of empire anymore right so so that is what you need to understand why are people accepting slump you know in uk talking about uk the majority I'm, I'm a tough i'm a tough cookie to crack majority of uh, yeah. people becoming muslims <laughs> are educated women Every cookie right. cookie. yeah yeah eventually three, three quarters <laughs> 75 percent <laughs> of people becoming muslims are women educated uh, they're probably scared for their lives because this place is full of why would you say why, why would you say that no, no but why would you say that why would British women, women? Why would British women be scared for their lives? They're scared. Because right, that, that's a whole different eco-climate of political and economic. What? I'm talking about British women. Who knows why this country is going to British women. Why are British women accepting Islam? The reasons I just told you. Probably. Why? They're afraid? Probably. What evidence? What is probably business? You I don't want to do do deal with this do probability. Do you agree that they are moving because they are scared on no, the streets? No, the Swanson what? University, they did a study. I'd like to say 60%, 60% of people are white people. Yeah. I accept. Yeah, that's right. So why are they, why are they <laughs> accepting? If, if Islam, like, for example... For the reason I just said. What is it? You keep asking me this. What is the reason? Probably because they see the crackheads and degeneracy in the streets. But the reason for that is multifaceted and can be... Yeah, the reason for that is that there's no system that's been able to provide the socioeconomic benefits and the financial benefits, the material benefits that Islam provides. No, no, no. Don't you dare say, if we look at the Muslim majority countries, you're looking at... I was going to say, no, no, because... Wallahi, no, no, let me tell you what. Because if you... Because I, I think that you're too smart. Because you were too... Because you look... No, no, no. Because you're... No, you look too smart to, to try to do a historical snapshot of 100 years and base Islam off of that because you know for for 1400 or you know 1300 years Islam was either the superpower in the world or one of the superpowers in the world and Islam flourished all of science flourished under Islam not in your so that's what I'm saying so so we so just because the last 100 years we're getting bodied because uh, our resources are getting plundered and our lands are getting bombed and our people are getting uh, what's it called defunct because of the education system is getting robbed yeah yeah, that's fine we could say that but that's why what's it called Islam still spreads because it has such potency and such truth to it that it transcends cultural boundaries you it transcends race yet fully personally you yeah. because I don't think they're that well read on the subject that the Islamic golden age was fundamentally Islamic and not Arab why did I say no 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 whoa, whoa. Hey, you, know, which makes me, you know the reason me to believe that it wasn't the Islamic re it wasn't Islam is the reason implemented Islamic. Maybe, I don't know. No, no, I don't think that every person that did good under the... It's actually still proof for my point. Let's get back I to think the point about the, the generosity of this country and why you think I should... Why women are turning to it. Uh, ask those women. Exactly. Yeah, ask them. No, no, no. We should do so that. Should do that. <laughs> no, we, we all know the reason. No, 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 no we don't. don't. You don't. No, you don't. No. You don't. I do. But, but you you're positive. You're, you're, you're preemptive. Oh, you're preemptive. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. preemptive. Oh, you're doing empire, this. Yeah, so no, come but, on. But it's not unique to Islam either. Uh, it seems to be because people are... You, uh, it's, 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 it's quite not, unique. Well, that, not, okay, I'll tell you why. Islam has the worst marketing in the world of any ideology probably in the last hundred years, yeah? And yet it is the fastest growing religion in the world that should that the subhanallah that's alone should get you to think a little bit yeah, because you know, you see, Islam is probably on the rise yeah, yeah. And you, you, you know religiosity is growing yeah. on that sorry regardless of being Islam yeah. sorry repeat that spirituality and religiosity yeah. is right. growing well there's one reason really uh, that's, not, that's not true maybe, maybe that's the case in the UK but uh, on the worldwide and it, and it varies per religion as well but it's not just unique to Islam that it's growing no 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 that actually is unique Pew even even Pew says that it's not Great rates of like interest in things like astrology and other the spiritual beliefs, other religious beliefs, beliefs are that's, yeah. growing, are growing amongst women. Like is, women. No, but I didn't say only women. But we didn't. We just had. We had a tangent about and, women. And, yeah, and in general. I, unless I've come in on the wrong point. What I yeah. initially was you talking about the growth of Islam amongst women in the UK. Yeah, no, no. Oh, that was, sorry, that's not just the. So Islam in general is the fastest growing religion the in the world. The point I was yes, making. Yes, yes, yes in yes, general, yes, and yes, not yes. only that, spirituality is on the decline. Actually, the point and I was making is the reasons why women, educated women, are accepting Islam. 
is not, not because of my force, because through their education and intellectual query what is inspired by observing, reading, studying, reflecting on Islam and the Quran and like the Prophet. And they then they then they then accept the socioeconomic factors going on in the way people turn to religion. Exactly. For example, where are the highest rates when you're just in poor countries with lower rates of education? Let's about UK women. Is that happening with Islam? No, no, no. In countries in Southeast Asia. The question is, there's lower economic security, there's political insecurity. So, in the UK, in the UK, there's less education. In the UK, scientific. In the UK, in the UK. No, no, but you have very growing Muslim religious communities in all the developed countries. As I pointed out, it's not just Islam that is growing amongst women. It's, but that's not true, bro. That is not. Okay, why? Let me help you out. Christianity is living on the decline, bro. I'm gonna help you out. Can I? All of it. Can I help you? It's not your team. Let him help you. Let me help you. Okay, just a second. Give a second. Because Catholics and Muslims are the same. Ismail. Ismail. Change the name as well. Wow. Uh, Ismail, what's your name? Oscar. Oscar. Good to meet you. So what we were saying? Why not? Why not? What we were saying? Women in this country, if you ask them, can you guarantee the safety of? Yeah, let's continue. Let's continue your talk. No, we're we're good for a bit. Oh, what time is it? No, yeah, no. Seven, 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 seven. So, we have to go and break our fast. Oscar, we can do, we can continue this. Yeah, what are you, yeah, come on. You want to come with us? You want to come, we can continue. No, no, I'm being, like, you want to come and continue? Okay, let's go, he'll come. Next Sunday, yeah. Inshallah, God willing, yeah. Okay, No, I'm saying, you want to come and join us? Where, where? We'll go to a restaurant right here, on here, on the drill. Yeah, yeah, come with us, bro. So we're not kidding, it's how we, how we invite people, come, come, come. We break our fast. We can pray there. That's, bro, bro, no way. No, 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 it's okay, I appreciate it. No, no, bro, seriously, come. Well, well, I come. Come, come. We'll continue. The, no, it's a good combo. Let's continue it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Wait, it's time to break up. You will be in a better position, inshallah, to be a better person as a muttaqi. And oh, being a muttaqi, Allah has given us this promise. Just some Ramadan. Allah has promised Jannah for even those who take for the muttaqi. And let us be of those people, inshallah, through this month of Ramadan. I'm fasting and qiyam and siyam and I'm reading and reflecting on the Quran. That's the achieve this taqwa and then we will be merciful. That's the reason why Allah has to go to Jannah. My nasiha is very short and sweet. Alhamdulillah. Who are you? My name is Ismail. Alhamdulillah with the, the team at Dawahwise. Short and sweet advice. Um, Ramadan is the shahar of ibadah. The shahar of, uh, what's it called? Being in some seclusion with Allah. So I know the vibes and like the camaraderie and the brotherhood and the sisterhood is all, mashallah, amazing. But please don't make sure it's not at the expense of your ibadah. Don't overdo the socialization in the sense that you then miss out on reading your Quran, miss out on understanding your Quran, miss out on doing Qiyamul Layl, miss out on doing all these things that are extremely important. Ramadan, mashallah, double XP month for all the people who play Call of Duty. You're getting double XP, this is limited time only offer. Do not waste it on the things that you can do outside of Ramadan, inshallah. And that's it. Assalamu alaikum.